はいそうや、I don't know if this is all gonna blow over or if this is literally end times but、uh, you know these are dust masks, right? like they, they, they protect against dust Stop, stop buying them, please. <laughs> I need those. Anyways, for financial reasons, I have opted to become a possum. Because think about it. Possums don't have to deal with any kind of real world issues, do they? Taxes? I don't know. Anyways, so, this is the possum costume I made. I'll show you how I made it. Isn't she cute?、Uh, the base, the base that it's made on. Is a 3D printed vase, and I've never used one before, but they are the most lightweight, beautiful things in the entire world. And I will tell you who I got this from. My amazing friend Nadia sent this to me. She 3D prints these vases and she sells them, and they're literally one of the most wonderful things I've ever experienced. I'm never going to switch back to resin because of these. They are absolutely phenomenal. Like, they're lightweight, they're durable. Like, the, it's amazing. They're so much easier to work with, too. I, the, I can't think of any reason that people would rather use resin at this point because 3D printed bases are the way of the future, I swear. Anyways, so here's the possum head. Here's how I did it. All right, just a fair warning before we get into this video. I'm not great at voiceovers. Like, I think I always do something wrong. So. I'll provide a lot of pictures and a lot of videos of what I'm doing and kind of hope that I get my point across. First things first. Just to start out, I have foamed out the inside of the 3D printed vase just to make it a little more comfortable and because I have a very tiny head. And I've also added elastic to it so it will stick onto my head. I have added elastic towards the back of the hinge, as close to the hinge as possible to give it a good snapping up motion. There are some slits for elastic closer to where the mouth is located, but I found the movement was a little bit better if I put the elastic further back. Though a smaller strip of elastic did help movement when I put it in the rectangle as well. So there's like two pieces of elastic on each side. I don't even know if what I'm saying makes sense. What am I doing here? Welp, I have started on the eyes. For the eyes, I am using two separate types of Christmas ornaments, these ones to be specific. I am layering them on top of each other with the flatter one having headlight tint put on top of it. I used a gray headlight tint. I had to use two layers of this specific brand because you could see my eyes if I used one layer. But the vision out of it is absolutely phenomenal. I'm not a pro at putting on headlight tint, but I will provide a link in the description and I might do a more in depth tutorial of these eyes if you're more curious about it. So I'm just dremeling both of these Christmas ornaments in half and stacking them on top of each other. After I've applied the headlight tint to the slightly smaller ones, I'm cutting pieces away from them to adjust for fit in this part. Because I have to remember that the eyes have to fit inside of the head too. That's a very important part of owning a fursuit and wearing a fursuit being able to wear the thing. Once I have the eyes made, I line the holes of the eyes with a pink minky fabric. This is the kind that I'm using. And this is going to provide a tear duct and also make it look a little bit more realistic. Once I've glued that fabric down, I'll do a small Henson stitch right where it connects, just so you don't see that little seam line, and then I can get to gluing the eyes in. I just kind of cram those eyes on up in there and glue around it, trying to make it so that the glue doesn't seep through the areas where the pink fabric is. I have to hold it in place for a little while for it to actually kind of stick down, but I think the fabric makes it adhere to the 3D printed base a little bit better. The 3D printed base doesn't take hot glue super well, that's the only issue I've found with it. But honestly, I think it's a plus because if I need to readjust things, it comes off super easy. This is about what the head's looking like, by the way. Kind of looks creepy. It looks like he's got pink eye. But it's, it's fine. He's gonna, he's gonna look better soon. I think the possum's a girl now. I'm really not sure. Now, with both of the eyes in place, I'm going to drill out some nostril holes. And I wasn't originally gonna do this, but I think I was just on a lot of Adderall. So I decided to also make the nose out of EVA foam. This would provide a little bit of squish to it and make it look a little bit more realistic and textured. I'm just dremeling out some EVA foam I've hot glued down, which took a long time. I think you should use contact cement and not hot glue, but I'm stubborn. Once I've got the EVA foam shaped the way that I like it, do you like that I'm pronouncing EVA foam correctly now? I take a piece of that minky fabric I showed you earlier and I just glue that sucker down. I poke some holes in the fabric right where the nostrils are and put a lot of hot glue on the inside of the mask and shove a pencil through those holes. To sort of create a more nose like thing going on. I don't know if I explained that very well, but basically, what I'm trying to do, as you can see in this picture, is I tried to provide nose holes and get the fabric inside of the hole as well, so I didn't have to sew on another piece. 
With that nose in place, it is time to fur this thing, and I'm just going to tell you I am doing this in the laziest way possible. I, I got this method from a Clockwork Creatures livestream. I think it's still up. I'll link it in the description if it is. But essentially, I've just taken a triangle of fur that can comfortably cover the top half of the head, and I'm just gluing it down with a nice little hole for the nose and a little gap where I'm going to be putting that, and a nice little gap where I'm going to be putting that pink marking in the tip of the nose. Uh, what I try to do with this is I start right down the center of the head and glue towards the sides, culminating any wrinkles towards the eyes where the fur is going to be cut away anyways. This actually creates a really nice seamless look to your fursuit and is a really good idea if your character has a very streamlined appearance. There aren't a lot of curves essentially, and if your character is one color. Once the fur is glued down, I'm going to try to trim away a little bit of fur, see if I've got everything glued down correctly. If I don't, I'll readjust. And once I think it's on pretty well, I'll cut away those eye holes. Now I'm taking a piece of pink fur, and this one's short so I don't even have to shave it, and I'm gluing it right above the lip and sewing it in place with a Henson or a ladder stitch. I think I used a ladder stitch here, but I think a Henson stitch gives a slightly more clean appearance, but it can get a little bit hard to do and see what you're doing with fur. So a ladder stitch will be just fine here. I wouldn't consider this like a professional tactic to put markings on, just placing things together. I think the actual method most people use is they make a duct tape cast of the head and create a pattern from that and then sew it and glue it all in together in one piece. I kind of like doing it this way because it makes the markings a little bit more even, especially if it's personal head and I don't really care if there's a little bit of extra bulk going on. And I don't even think you can notice that I didn't do it the right way. I'm using an air quote, but you can't see me do that from the outside of the head. It's just sort of a construction thing that I do, and I don't take commissions anymore, so I'm allowed to do whatever I want with my personal heads. This is also how I'm attaching all of the fur around the nose, just going around it with a ladder stitch. Because of this, I would try to keep hot glue as far away from the edge of the nose as you can, because if you get too much hot glue on your needle, you're gonna need to take some sandpaper and get all that hot glue off to continue, because it can get stuck. If your needle does get stuck, don't panic, don't freak out, you don't have a needle stuck in your fursuit head. Just grab a pair of pliers and yank it out of there. That's all you have to do. Easiest thing in the entire world. I used to freak out when this happened in like abandoned project. You don't have to do that. I also use this to attach around the eyes. I took no video footage of this for some reason, but as you can see, all around the eye, I've gone in with that ladder stitch and made it a nice, comfortable, cohesive piece. Look at that. Lastly, on the ears, I also didn't take a lot of footage of me doing this because I guess I don't know how tutorials work. Uh, I just cut out a piece of EVA foam, sort of in the in an ear shape, if that makes any sense, and I glued down one side of it to create a nice little fold in it. Uh, these are sort of like, a, I'd say, a teardrop shaped with the like pointy part of the teardrop shaved off so that there's enough to glue down to the base, and then fold it over. What I do with the fur, I was really lazy with this part too. I just took Part of that folded over piece and the back of the ear made a pattern out of that of the fur and just glued fur to the back of the ear. It was really lazy. I'm not even going to lie. It was the laziest thing I think I've ever done. And I'm not very competent in my ability to tell you how to make the back of a fursuit head, how to make a fursuit hood, because I don't even think I do it right half the time. I have to readjust it constantly. So I'm going to provide some tutorials in the description so you can make the back of a fursuit head properly, and I can keep doing it the wrong way, because I don't believe in bettering myself. Anyways, now that I've got a really cool possum head, I can go out and start living my life as the possum I've always wanted. there's enough that I could say. Um, I think this is like one of the cutest, most adorable heads I've ever made. The moving jaw works so phenomenally. I've never had a moving jaw work this well on a head. I attribute that to the 3D printing, honestly, because resins always felt very heavy and clunky. The world's crazy right now, and I think we could just do with some more possums. They eat ticks. They're just so good. <laughs> I don't actually think I'm a possum, I swear. <laughs> Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz.
hope you have a wonderful day and you know,